Hello. I'm getting this in kind of late. Um, we have construction going on across the street and it was, it's so noisy. It's really annoying, but I'm like, I can't do this video while this is going on. So I waited and then, you know, had to make dinner and everything. It's about seven o'clock here on the West coast. Anyway, um, happy to have you here. Uh, I wanted to just do a little talk, a little reading and a little talk about, um, using memories when you're writing. I think a lot of people have sort of this idea that, um, well, maybe not, maybe not a lot, but I think there's this um, perception that everything you write when you're writing fiction has to be made up, has to come from your, you know, imagination. And I always tell kids when I'm doing school visits that writing is really part memories and part imagination that most writers kind of draw from both um, because life experiences you know that's how we you know ha have things that we have experienced that we know personally that we can write about and that will be realistic because we know about it right um so as an example, I did this series for um, Scholastic a number of years ago. They're hard to get now, unfortunately. They were mostly, I think, for Scholastic clubs and fairs. Um, so unfortunately, they're a little bit hard to get. But anyway, it's called Charmed Life, and it's about four girls who meet at summer camp and found, find this bracelet that they pass around and um, they think that it's lucky and each girl has their own book has her own book and so this last one is Hannah's book it's called Hannah's Bright Star and Hannah lives on a farm and in my mind Hannah lives on the farm where my grandparents lived and I wanted to read you a little section about uh, from it because I pulled this right from my memories. Um, okay. So her mom has just told her that there's a surprise up in the barn. And so um, I don't want to read too much and take too long. So I'm sort of dropping you in the middle of this chapter. Um, I can't believe I finally get to see what's up there. After you, her mom said, waving her arm toward the stairs. Hannah climbed until her head reached the loft. Then she stopped and peered around. At the far end of the barn was the large window that her grandpa called the hay hole. He'd explained to her that hay bales were brought into the loft through that hole by way of a hay elevator. Since it was wintertime and not exactly warm outside, it was closed up. There were small windows up near the roof, though, that provided some light. In the corner, to Hannah's immediate right, was something she couldn't quite make out. What is that big thing in the corner, she called down to her mother. Climb up and take a look, her mother called as she made her way up the stairs. So Hannah went ahead and climbed all the way up until she was standing in the loft. The thing she'd wondered about had a wooden platform with a few stairs, so she went closer and only then could she finally see what she couldn't see before. Mama, seriously? A trampoline? Her mother stood behind her now. Yes, isn't it just so fun? Your grandpa and a few of his friends built it up here many years ago for his three young boys to play on. How come you're just now telling me about it? Hannah asked. Well, because one of the springs broke and no one ever had it fixed. It was the New Year's Eve party that pushed your daddy to finally get it done. Can I try it out? Hannah asked. Sure, go right ahead. You'll notice the mat is woven, which is different from today's trampolines. And the springs are nice and big, so you'll bounce really high. Stay away from the edges, all right? Someone had piled bales of hay around the platform so you couldn't fall. But Hannah could see that what her mother was mostly concerned about were the big gaps between the springs, especially in the corners. Hannah jumped higher and higher until it felt like she was flying. For 15 minutes, she jumped until she was out of breath. When she stepped off, her mama said, I haven't seen you smile that much in a long time. 
It's fun, Hannah said. The kids are going to love it. Can we jump in groups? Probably no more than two at a time. Safe us that way. Now, come on, we have a lot of work to do. Let's go get your brothers to help us haul the folding tables and lights and our other things we need to put up here for the party. Hannah looked around and thought maybe it wasn't such a bad place to have a New Year's Eve party after all. So there's another part earlier where she describes walking into this barn that's on the farm. And I totally drew from my memories there as well. And the trampoline is something that exists. Uh, I don't know if it's there anymore. We, we had to sell the farm, at, farm after my grandparents passed away. But um, when I grew up and would visit, and I even lived on the farm for a couple of years, um, that trampoline was always up there and something that we could go and do. And my grandpa built it when his, in the book I called, uh, there's three boys, but my grandpa built it for his three daughters. So um, that's an example of how you can use a memory and tie it into something you're writing so that um, it just brings, you know, some, some experience that you have, have seen or felt or heard personally and just, you know, really bring something special to your writing. So don't be afraid to use things from your life in your writing is basically, I think, what I want to say. My husband, when he reads my books, he'll often say, you know, he'll find little things that he knows. Um, you know, only, only people who know me really, really well would even realize that that's something that came from my life. Um, but it's fun to sprinkle those things in there and just use what you know, you know, they say, write what you know, and that isn't always, you know, I, I feel like that's a, something that you shouldn't call a rule. You shouldn't just totally always only write what you know. What fun is that? I had never been to Paris and I decided to write about Paris because I wanted to visit in my imagination. So I wouldn't have written the Paris book if I only wrote what I knew, but, um, there's also some value to just adding things in that you know, that, that sort of just, I don't know, like I said, makes it a little more special. So, all right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.